Hey friends, Kara here. We are going to start off our quick start series with what type of wood should you purchase? Um, I actually have two different types that I kind of alternate back and forth with, um, and it kind of depends on what I'm doing. So if I have very intricate designs and I don't want to do a lot of sanding, the, the option that I pick is MDF. Now, MDF is a manufactured wood product, and a lot of like inexpensive furniture is made from MDF because basically it's like wood glue and wood chips that they make into a wood product. Now, this is a very consistent product that does not splinter when you cut it, and you can get very good detail um, whenever you're using this a much easier and with less splintering than you can with the triply product. But this is more expensive, it's heavier, and honestly it's not great for you to breathe in the chemicals. So it's my second choice in wood, but I wanted to show it to you because I know a lot of people that use the, this like the consistency of it. The other thing I'll tell you is it sucks at paint. So that brings me to my number one choice for wood, and that is triply underlayment. This is just a piece I've already cut something off of, and I have a piece of tape here because this product does splinter since it is a wood, you know a real wood product. Um, the other one being you know more glue and little pieces it doesn't splinter because it doesn't have the the wood grain look to it so this does still have a wood grain uh, and this does splinter but with the right blade and by cutting multiple signs at once which all you have to do is stack and clamp your wood together before you start cutting and you can cut I've cut up to five signs at once it just depends on how long your blades are so you can get those inner like the second third and the fourth sign if you cut multiples those won't have splintering on either side because they are sandwiched between and they just they can't splinter but your top and bottom will have some splinters so in order to help with that I normally will use some type of either masking tape or painter's tape along the edge of where I am cutting. So I will draw my lines on there and then I'll go back and I will use painter's tape and push it down where I can still see my line and I'll cut along that line to minimize splintering. All right, this product is not expensive at all. It's like, I wanna say $15 a sheet for a four foot by eight foot sheet. And I have them cut it down for me when I'm in the store. I have them cut it like this. So if this was the four foot length and this was the eight foot length, I have them cut it straight down the middle and then twice this direction so that I have six equal pieces. And when you do the math, that comes out to six equal pieces of 32 by 24. So you can get a, you know at least six signs out of this, but normally, um, I can get closer to 12 if I match my designs right, meaning I use one that is um, more rounded or squared and then one that's more rectangular right next to it. So if you're, if you're really you know strategic about it, you can usually get more, which makes that the cost per sign super, super low. Um, and especially with designs like like a lighthouse and a pair of flip-flops. You could easily get those two on one. So I hope that's helpful. And I put the link in the description for you so that you will be able to see the exact product that I purchased. And like I said, I do have them cut it down for me so that when I come home, I have these sheets that are 32 by 24, which are much easier for me to manage. Now, you could have them cut them different dimensions if you wanted to, for example, if you wanted to get two 20 inch signs out of it, you may wanna have them cut this line lower and then still go um, at the, you know, this mark. It, you just kinda of have to play around with it. But this is my very favorite way to do it. So I hope that that's helpful and I'll see you in the next video.